Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and as usual, of course, I've got some stuff to show and uh, yeah, about 20-ish or so vehicles here we're going to take a look at and uh, let's get uh, right into it. So, Ultra Red, of course, All right? We got this guy, pretty sweet. Uh, this thing is from uh, 2023 release 4. And actually, I just got the last one I needed for this set as well, but I'm not going to show it in this episode. Actually, you know, maybe I should show it. Well, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to grab it. It's uh, buried right now. But uh, this is the last one. Well, this isn't the last one I needed. The Celica Super is the last one I needed. Uh, so you know what that means. We're going to be doing a full Auto World series video for this set. And uh, now the only thing I'm missing from 2023, as far as regular store releases go, is the Golf Corvette Ultra Red. I need that, and then I'm complete uh, for the 2023 Premium 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's pretty cool. I'm only missing one. Um, that's really awesome. So this, of course, came from my buddy Diecastrum. You guys all know that. I mention them all the time. Uh, very, very cool release. So, of course, we're going to open that. And I've already opened these two because I took pictures of them for the Lanley uh, 64 car Royal Rumble. I don't think either of them made it in. But I opened these already, but we'll kind of open them again. And uh, we'll take a look at those in comparison with the Ultra Red. The usual. All right. So that is nifty. Then um, I got some stuff from my buddies SC Diecast. Uh, check them out on, uh, well, Facebook mostly. Uh, they also have an scdiecast.com website now that you can order from as well. Facebook's probably the easiest way to keep up with the new stuff that's coming out and the new stuff that they get. Um, they've been... They've always got like some Mattel stuff, and they've got Greenlight in the past, Mini GT in the past. They've started to add uh, Inno 64 and some weird like Chinese brands, which actually I picked up um, one item because I thought it looked really cool. This is from Autobots Models. It's a Toyota Land Cruiser. I know nothing about the brand. I don't know if this is licensed or not. I am not sure. But they're getting a lot of like overseas stuff now that you can pick up uh, at SC Diecast for reasonable prices. It's nice to have somewhere local or somewhere at least in the U.S. to get them for us instead of having to pay overseas shipping. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but we have this. It's a uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. And uh, we're, I'm excited to get this open and actually take a detailed look at this. It's a massive uh, truck with... Uh, I don't know, some sort of like thing on the back and I don't know. I, I don't know. It's all tricked out, whatever. We're going to take a look at that. So I'm excited to uh, to check that out. I think that's going to be pretty neat. Um, then I've got a Kaido House, uh, Datsun 510 Pro Street, Japan version 1. So funny thing about this is uh, I was like, what does this one look like? I can't remember what it looks like. And, you know... Uh, my buddy said, just open one up, you know, open it up and check it out. Well, I opened it up and you can see I have two here. I, I opened it up and I'm like, uh, <laughs> is it supposed to look like that? So I scored a chase and I'm like, uh, he's like, do you want it? I'm like, sure, I'll take it, whatever. And he just charged me a regular price for it. And then I'm like, well, I have to get a second one so I can have the regular. So I got the regular as well. We'll open them up, but my first Kaido House Chase. So that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't, I've bought tons of these, you know, as they've come out. I've never actually scored a Chase in one, and uh, that was pretty neat to uh, to score that. And he did not have to, like, sell it to me. He could have kept it, put it on eBay, or whatever he wanted to do with it. But he's like, you opened it, it's yours. So I'm like, all right, cool, I'll take it. All right, so that's pretty awesome. So SC Diecast, super cool dudes. They do not pull the chases from their Kaido House cases. So if you order, uh, pre-order those from them, you have a chance at grabbing a chase. And they don't pay attention to where they're grabbing it from the box. I know some hobby dealers might know where in the box it is or something. They do not do that. Uh, you can score a chase randomly. So that's, that's pretty neat. Uh, the next thing I picked up from them, I picked up another M2 machines. Now, I don't get M2 very often. Uh, you guys know that, but this is a Mio exclusive Chevy pickup, Chevy Cheyenne Super 30, and I had to get an example of this massive truck. 
So I'm excited about that. We're going to open that up and take a look. Uh, pretty darn cool, actually. So pretty pumped on that. So those are the few items I'm going to show that I got picked up from SC Diecast. I picked up a couple of other things, but um, those will likely be in the next episode. Uh, but I did find some stuff in store. So uh, my buddy Todd was able to pick up a set. And normally I wouldn't care about these neon speeders at all. But I got some, and they're like three fifty a piece at Walmart. That's a little steep for these kind of mainline. I guess they're full deco, semi premium vehicles. I guess you could call it that. But uh, yeah. Anyway, I got uh, six of the eight cars, including the five ten wagon, which is the one you know. That's the hot one. Uh, there is a hot pink, what is it, uh, Skyline 2000 GTR I do not have. Uh, what's the other one I'm missing? I think maybe the Integra. Yeah, the Integra is the other one that I'm missing. So I need the Integra and I need the uh, Skyline 2000 GTR and then I'd have them all. So that means I have the wagon, which is probably going to be the toughest one for most people to find. The Honda S2000 the uh, Toyota Celica, the Mitsubishi Eclipse, Mazda RX-7, and the Nissan 350Z, which, man, do they really use the same size wheel? I don't know, the wheels look like they're the wrong size for this car. But we'll take a look at those when we get them out of the package. I'm, we're going to open all those up, so six of the eight cars do i want the other two yeah i guess i might as well get the whole set at least for this wave um so if i see them in store i'll pick them up and you know maybe i will uh grab those i don't think i got any from the first wave i might have got maybe one from the first wave now that i think of it but whatever i can't even remember what they what it was um, and then also in store, so actually, so my buddy Todd found these. I found some Matchbox in store, and I think these are new. I'm pretty sure they are. We got the Porsche 918 Spider in green. The 64 Lincoln Continental, which I think is a new casting. So that's cool. Uh, Tesla Model S in red. I picked up the uh, Morris Minor Saloon in green. Kind of a weird, ugly looking little car. And then I think this is also a new tooling. Um, yeah, it says copyright date 2023, so it's got to be. A 1977 Jaguar XJ6C. So I scooped that one as well. And I think that's a new casting for 2024 release. I think. Um, could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think it came out last year in 2023. That's why it's copyright dated 2023, but whatever. All right. And then of course we got our weekly, uh, box from Jay and, uh, my buddy Jay sends me weird stuff and sometimes some really cool stuff too. That's not that weird. We've got a pop race, uh, singer Mulholland drive. This thing is cool. It actually looks really cool. I've seen a lot of people pick this up and take pictures of it. And it's a really awesome release. And I was on the fence about grabbing it for myself for a long time. And I don't have to worry about it because he picked one up for me or had an extra one and, and he just sent it to me. So that's awesome. We're going to open up that. And then we've got some weird stuff. Well, let's start with uh, this. Well, we got a treasure hunt. Basic treasure hunt for B cases. This is the Ain't Fair bus thing. Kind of cool. And then I he sent me some weird stuff. We got... Uh, Talking screen machines with real racing sounds, speech, sound, and lights, electronics. It's a Diora. Ooh, the battery's still working it. Well, cool. We'll play around with that a little bit more in the next segment, but we got this Diora, and it looks to be a keychain. And just a weird piece of Hot Wheels history, I guess. When did this come out? Uh, copyright date, 1999. So it's been around, been around for a while. And then lastly, we got some weird cheapo die cast mini cars. Kind of don't look bad actually. Is this is this a Maisto product? Uh, Uni Fortune Toys. 
says it's officially licensed. We've got a Lamborghini Huracan Coupe, an Audi A5 Sportback, and a Chevy Camaro. Uh, these look like they're somewhat decent. They, they probably don't have interiors, but we're going to go ahead and open up these. So there's some weird off-brand coolness uh, to look at. So that's what we're going to look at today. Um, let's go ahead and get into opening this stuff up. Um, should we put together a thumbnail? You know, we like to do that. Um, I didn't do it in the last one, but might as well. I'm just going to show them. How's that? Sure. All right. Let's flip the camera around. Let's look at this stuff up close. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Let's actually start by going ahead and uh, opening up uh, the stuff from Jay. Let's start with the stuff from Jay uh, today. We've got... Uh, this ain't fair. This is a uh, treasure hunt, uh, standard, regular old treasure hunt, basic guy, uh, pretty cool, newer casting, and uh, just kind of neat. We're going to go ahead and open it up, of course. It's already got a cracked blister on it. I'm guessing that's why he didn't keep it, because he's a, more of a carded collector. So we can just slide her out like that, and then you go, there you go, congratulations, this symbol means you just found a collectible treasure hunt vehicle. I'm going to rip that off anyway, because save the card for a mail-in, even though I really don't do mail-ins, uh, not typically, unless it's something I really, really want, but I save the cards for my fellow collectors that like to keep their cars carded so that they can go ahead and uh, do a mail-in without having to open up their cars. So they appreciate that, all right? Kind of a neat design. We got two turntables on the side there. Hot Wheels World Tour. I'm actually gonna, we're gonna try lowering the camera a little bit. Sorry about that. We're still, you know, this is Dave's uh, trial and error uh, video display sort of setup thing. Um, so there you go. That's better. Then we can actually get close right here on the ground. I think that looks a lot better. Uh, so there you go. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of digging that. All right. We'll go ahead and set that off back there. And then uh, what else did he get me? We could, oh, Let's stick Hot Wheels for just a second. We got this weirdo thing here. Um, this thing. So this is a... Oh, the nice thing I can do about this too is we can go... Whoop. Yeah, it's going to be shaky. Uh, the thing is I use an iPhone here, but there's no image stabilization on the camera that I use. Scream Machines! Try me. And take a peek at the back there. Collect them all. So you've got the Twin Mill. I think that's like the Solar or whatever it is. Uh, way Too Fast or something like that is that other one. And then the Diora. Look, you can get that cool backpack too. Look at that. Look how cool that is. All right. Go ahead and uh, tighten that back up. All right. And then... Uh, We'll take a look at this. We're going to go ahead and open it up. The Scream Machines. Speech, sound, ooh, and light. Look at that. What else did we do? I thought it would do more than one sound. Apparently not. Man, this thing has been sitting in the, the package for however long, and the batteries still work. By the way, it does not roll. In case you were curious, this thing does not roll. But it does do that. Kind of an interesting little thing. Diora, um, I don't think that I will be putting it uh, on my uh, keychain. Um, it's plastic. I feel like it would get broken really quick. It takes four, uh, three LR44 batteries, also known as 357s, also known as, uh, many other numbers, but, uh, yeah. Hot Wheels. No rolling on this one, but still kind of a cool little accessory, right? So it's kind of neat. We'll put it back there. All right. Uh, next we got this generic thing and this is the, uh, Officially licensed brand, uh, mini cars, die cast metal, three pack, scale 164. Interesting. Uh, is there a copyright date on the back of this? Did we check? Um, I'm looking, scanning, scanning, scanning for a date. 
Uh, it might be on here somewhere, but there is a lot of uh, gobbledygook back there. Did I just see it? I just feel like I just... Copyright date 2022? Yeah, FCA US. So these are like newer? Where, where did, are these like a dollar store kind of thing? Like a dollar, um, dollar tree? A dollar tree treat? Maybe. Might be. Well, we get uh, three sports cars in here. We get the uh, Camaro. Pretty nice. Not a bad, not a bad looking casting, really. Not terrible. Uh, stance wise, pretty decent too. Uh, the wheels are ugly. That is the uh, almost all the cheap brand stuff has ugly wheels. It's like one set of wheels away from being halfway decent i think with all of this kind of like uh, more cheap stuff it's always got blacked out windows too because there is no interior molding so there's nothing um to show that it has an interior and i that really isn't doesn't bother me on these little cheapo things i don't know i think they're kind of cool little examples of cars kind of neat and then like they become kind of rare later on in life because i don't think a lot of people buy them and take care of them like a collector would um, so, yeah, so there's that. Here's the Audi. Same, uh, chintzy wheels, blacked out windows, of course. Uh, but we do got, you know, some little bit of taillight detail, a little bit of front end detail on this little model. Of course, it rolls well, all of that, because it's uh, just a plastic wheel vehicle. Uh, let's see. And then we have... <clears throat> the Lambo. Let's just think I'm getting some uh, lighting issues here, but uh, we're, we're learning. Lamborghini, slightly different wheel on this one. Still somewhat ugly, but uh, the sh overall shape of the vehicle looks pretty nice. Um, the headlights like almost have the illusion of being lensed sometimes the way you look at them because it's almost like a translucent silver. They didn't really paint much silver on there. Little Lambo uh, logo up there, and uh, not not bad. I mean, really, not terrible. Um, I'm gonna try to uh, bring down the exposure a little bit on this here. Let's try that. Might be a little better. But now on the focus. Oh, I hate that. So, yeah, pretty nifty. All right, so there's that. Uh, what should we look at next? Probably the pop race. This guy would be good. All right got this cool singer porsche i don't think this is licensed either pop race confuses me with their licensing um and as some other brands do as well but uh i don't think this is a i don't know if it's not licensed by porsche uh, looking at the back here yeah i don't see any licensing detail i gotta rip the plastic off of this so bear with me I uh, neglected to do that beforehand. Oh my gosh. And it is like thick plastic. So, oh, I gotta get a scissors. Anyway. So, that's the thing with moving where I'm filming here is I don't have my tools readily available. We need a scissors. We're gonna need maybe a screwdriver. I don't know if we need a screwdriver or not. We might. Um, and then I'd like to have one of these handy as well. So we can do some rippage of the plastic. Here's the problem with uh, filming on black is look at all that dust. That is so, and that's coming from like cardboard packaging. It's just, uh, it just gets all over the room actually. All right, open this up and check it out. So this is a really cool model, actually. Now I have, I 
three different versions now of this actual tooling from Pop Race. I've got like a plain old green one. I've got the blue one that came with the roof rack and the uh, skis and stuff. And then we've got this one now. This one's probably my favorite. It's got like the rally lights up in the front. This thing is just pretty sick. I, I, I think it's really awesome. You guys will have to let me know what you think about this, about the Singer Porsches. Are they licensed? Are they not? I don't know. Pop Race is confusing. They confuse me, and I just don't know. So some of their stuff I know for sure is licensed, and some of the stuff uh, appears to not be. I'm just, I don't, I still don't understand the IP law kind of stuff when it comes to international die cast and what, uh, what's going on with it. But I do think this is pretty cool. Just the lighting again here. Let's do that. So, yeah. Pretty nifty there. All right, we'll go set that back there. Hopefully I don't knock it off the edge. And then uh, what else do we got? What else should we look at? Should we look at uh, the Ultra Reds first? Let's get, into, uh, let's get into the auto world. I swear I opened up this Kingsway already. Maybe I didn't. I think I just opened up the one. Yeah, the version A. So I already opened up this guy. So we'll go ahead and take a peek at that real quick. Just pull it out real quick. And then... Uh... So this, Kingswood... Yeah. Looks like the lighting's too bright. Can I change that? Oop, that's off. Sorry to do this, like... On video. We'll try it like that once. See what we get. That actually might be better. All right. So you've got it in blue. Uh, specifically in uh, Misty Turquoise Poly. And I think that looks quite good. Pretty awesome. So I'm digging that. This is a great version of the wagon. It's got the wood paneling. I like the dark wood paneling on the blue, on the turquoise poly. I think that looks really nice. And then, of course, we got a version B car, which is uh, this one here in uh, champagne gold poly. Get that guy open. And here is your champagne gold poly with a messed up wheel. We got to fix that tire. There we go. Tire came off the rim there. But here it is in champagne gold poly. Very cool as well. So I'm digging that. Pretty nifty. Of course, these are premium auto world. So they're going to have the opening uh, hood feature. All that jazz. Lots of detail. All the stuff you would expect from Premium Auto World. Yeah, very cool little wagon. Or not very little, actually. Very cool wagon. And then uh, we've got... Oh, by the way, this is the first release of the 1970 uh, Kingswood Estate casting. So they've come out with the Kingswood Estate long ago. However, this one, I think, is the 70. So the only thing different about it, I think, is just the front end. I don't have the other one handy to to look at but i'm pretty sure that's the only difference is the front end is a is a different is a different deal all right um next is the 1970 kingswood estate uh, ultra red this is on the version b card so let's check that out doesn't matter if it's on version b or version a though they're gonna be the same you guys should know that from watching my videos. I say it every single time we open an Ultra Red, which is pretty much almost every week. Um, and here is this gorgeous Ultra Red. So pretty cool. Aside from the red tires would be the only thing that I don't like. But the white rims I can deal with. I think that looks pretty awesome. Of course, the hood opens on this one as well. If we can get it open. Uh, it seems to be kind of stuck shut. There we go. There you go. 
in just a very pretty color red. And pretty cool all together. So you'll have to tell me between this week and last week what, what you liked better as far as the lighting setup goes. I'm kind of leaning towards last week uh, just based on what I'm doing right now. But it's hard to tell when you're just looking at it through the little screen. Uh, but you'll have to let me know. So we got red tires, white rims, ultra red body, ultra red interior. And I believe we figured out that these go off the version A vehicles. Yeah, they go off, to, off of the version A, even though you can only tell it on one uh, ultra red, which is the one we showed last week, which is the Ram. Uh, so that's the only way you can tell what traits the ultra red actually uses. And uh, but very, very cool uh, to get this one off the list. It's a really neat ultra red. Looks pretty awesome. I love the Kingswood Estate. Nice big wagon, and uh, I definitely dig it. I think it's really cool. So we'll throw those three in back there and uh, move on to the next item of discussion. Uh, speaking of large vehicles, maybe we should get into this guy real quick here. I'm going to raise this up just a little bit, making constant adjustments just to be annoying here. Oh. And then, of course, not editing that stuff out. Why would we do that? All right. This is a Mio exclusive 1973 Chevrolet Cheyenne Super 30. Chevy pickups built to stay tough. Man, that thing is massive. The Super 30. Uh, so I had to get one of these. I had to get one of these. And I, and I saw one that didn't have, you know, Coca-Cola on it or anything dumb on it. Just had a... Uh, just a straight up orange paint job and I'm like that looks cool I'm gonna get that one and that's what we did and that's what we got so my scissors is going along for a ride there and here is the Chevy Super 30 <laughs> all right that's pretty cool uh, we've got a rubber band over the back. I'm going to take that off camera for a second just to pull it off. It's uh, wrapped around the dualies in the back, and then it uh, keeps the like the tunnel cover or whatever you call it attached. Ooh, look at this. It rolls. No way was I expecting it to roll that well. And we've got the plastic cover for the bed. Uh, probably a good idea to kind of keep that on there. Had a bunch of holes in this tooling for different accessories and whatnot. Um, yeah, it looks better with it on. So we're going to keep it on and look at this tooling. It's pretty awesome, actually. You guys know I've kind of ragged on M2 quite a bit, but they've put out some really cool stuff as of late. So we got true dualies in the back, metal base, metal body, uh, blacked out grill and bumper. Matte black looks good. Inserted details for headlights and taillights. This thing is heavy. It's, you know, it has to be heavy. It's all metal. And it's just pretty awesome. I uh, really like this, actually. I think this is a really cool lowered, you know, crew cab type pickup. And um, I, I, I think it's pretty awesome. I think this is pretty pretty darn cool um I'm, I'm liking it so you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below if anything of m2 this is probably my favorite thing that's come out as of late uh from them and uh it rolls i'm happy about that it's got good quality control i'm happy about that as well and uh that's just all together pretty darn cool all right next uh let's take a look at the kaido house so we got one of these is the regular one of these is the chase and I, I don't collect Kaido House chases, but it's cool to get at least one for the collection, I think, just to kind of show what, what they are. So for educational purposes, really cool to get one. And actually, this basic one, this regular one, is really nice looking. It's got a metallic red. You guys know it, like things are metallic red, <clears throat> ultra reds. And... Uh, so this is no, no bad looking car in and of itself. It's 510, 
Pro Street. Look at those big fat meats in the back and the skinnies in the front. Ready to fly down the track and uh, at the strip. Details on the engine there. The Kaido House stuff is just fantastic. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And I get it. Uh, it's exaggerated features. It's uh, not true 164 scale. And a lot of people are kind of used to true 164 scale now. And I understand it. Because I'm kind of there with you. But I think these little Kaido House things are, are works of art. I mean, if you collect Hot Wheels, this is an easy transition for you to get into something somewhat premium. Would be the Kaido House stuff, in my opinion. I think that, yeah, why not? So let's do that. All right, the chase is like all the Kaido House chases is gonna be um, raw. So at least all the ones I've seen have had raw or at least parts of it were raw. And this is no exception and there it is. I think it's a cool way of doing it. So we could call it Kaido House Zamac. Should we do that? That makes some sense. Being it's June of I, um, and Hot Wheels related somewhat is we'll call it Zamac, but it's more of like a brushed metal look. And you can kind of see the quality in the actual tooling. These things look really cool. A lot of the uh, Mini GT Mio exclusives are uh, some of those are also raw meaning just no paint. They have the graphics on them, but no paint. Just kind of like that brushed metal look. And you can really tell like the quality in the die cast or the finish of the die cast that they used uh, for their mini GT models when you see the chases. Because if you compare this to, let's just say a Zamac, um, a Zamac or even an Auto World Raw, you can kind of see more of the imperfections in the metal. Which is cool too. It's just uh, you can really tell kind of the quality of Mini GT when you're when you're looking at them, you know, for lack of a better term, naked like this. Uh, so pretty nifty. Uh, I'm digging this. My first uh, Kaido House chase. I don't think it's, I'm going to catch the bug and start collecting them, uh, but it is cool to have one. And I think uh, this is really cool though too. So I'm glad to add those to my Kaido House collection. Uh, very very neat. Uh, digging them. All right. Moving on, we got this Autobots Models Land Cruiser. I know nothing about this. I did not know this was coming out. I didn't know anything. I saw it on the table at uh, my local meet from SC Diecast. I'm like, this looks pretty interesting. Why not go ahead and give it a shot and take a peek? Um, again, I don't typically buy a lot of unlicensed models, and I think this falls into that category. I just don't typically support unlicensed stuff. Um, in a way, it's kind of a good way to limit my collecting because there's a lot out there. In another way, um, in another way, it's just out of you know respect, I guess, for the diecast companies that do you know pay attention and do it right, and they you know they do things, I guess, what you would consider the correct way. And I don't I don't see that this is licensed. I'm guessing it isn't. Um, here's our packaging. Uh, it comes with what appears to be. I don't know if this is like a hood opening tool or some sort of tool to get parts opened. And then it comes with some little life, uh, lifeguard thingy, jiggy floaty thing. I think that's what that is. So we are going to have fragile pieces on this. We have an acrylic case and oh, wow. The top bit is actually taped on. I'm going to remove that tape. So that's covering it inside the acrylic case. And then it is also screwed down to the base. Okay. Um, this makes me a little bit nervous trying to handle this to get it off of here because of these little antenna in the front. Autobots models uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. This is quite the Land Cruiser. It's got like this fold down ladder thing. What is going on with this? Okay, uh, let's get it off the base carefully here. We got one screw to remove. It's coming out easily. This thing is heavy. I'm gonna tell you that straight off. 
And if you want one of these, I don't know if they have any of them left, uh, but it, these appear to be extremely detailed. Uh, rubber tires. The base is plastic, but the thing is super heavy. Uh, and obviously we've got a ton of detail up here. Inserted details for headlights, um, all sorts of little bits that you need to be careful with. Uh, reflective surface for the mirrors, and I'm just gonna do the best I can not to break it. Um, we've got something here. I'm gonna have to take these little accessories out of the bag and see what's going on back here. Two spare tires in the back, in case you have an extreme, and then like this weird tray thing that comes out of the back. I don't know what that's about, the tray thing, I'm not sure. And I don't know, this isn't supposed to be in the tray thing, is it? No. Um, this is like a poly pocket. And then I don't know um, where that's supposed to go. I don't know, is that supposed to go in here? No. Just supposed to sit on top? Maybe. I'm not sure. I'll have to look up pictures of this model and find out where this is supposed to go. Don't tell me like all these little drawers and stuff open. <sighs> they do. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That opens. Does this little guy open? No freaking way. I think it does. I don't know though. I'm not, I don't want to dig in there too hard. Um, so obviously this one on the side is going to open. I don't think this one opens. It looks like it's kind of glued sh shut. I just don't want to break it. I'm going to have to look this thing up to find out what I can move or remove or do on this thing. Those open. And this little thing does not fit in there. So you can't store it in there. But these little side little toolbox cargo area things open. This ladder flips down. I'm actually going to leave it in the flip down position because it wants to flip down on its own anyway. Um, smooth removing moving rubber tires. This thing could come in handy in all sorts of situations. Um, like for example, that's great. I finally got a perfect hood opening tool. Better than a guitar pick. So we're going to keep that around for sure. That's not going back in the box of this. Uh, this thing is cool. It really is. I don't know the story on it. Autobots. I mean, I know Autobots, like the Transformers Autobots. I don't know what is going on with the brand Autobots and what this is. But just based on uh, the quality of it, we got, what is that? I don't think that's supposed to be movable. This thing is like suspended. It's not attached to anything. And I think it's supposed to be, I think it's actually supposed to be glued on the front end right there. And it's not. So we got one small quality issue or not glued. Actually, I think it's supposed to be all part of the same piece. I may put a little dab of glue there just to get it to stay where it's supposed to, even though it probably won't fall off anyway. Um, but man, the more I'm looking at this, the more details I'm seeing. Oh man, does this, do any of these other little pieces open? This almost looks like it opens right here. This looks like, oh my gosh, I think it does. It does. Look at that. That opens. This. Does this open? I don't think that one opens. The one on this side will. Right here, that'll open. I'm trying to figure out if... Uh, I don't think this one might open too. I think it does actually. It's so hard to tell though. These panel gaps are so thin. I'm already like destroying this thing. Do you open? I don't think it does. I think just this one does, but geez, it might. It really might. And I don't know. You guys are going to have to Google this thing to get more information on it. This is not what I expected. I didn't expect to be able to like open up little bits on the side and all that stuff. The doors don't open. Clearly the gaps are there. I think this might actually open. This opens. Um, we know that. 
Uh, I'm going to have to explore that on the old Google machine because I really don't know. But yeah, little fragile bits, little fragile bobs. Very, very cool uh, die cast right there. And that is really neat. So I'll have to explore that later on. But uh, and we got a hood opening tool with it, which is cool too. All right, back to basics. So we're going to kind of blow through these. We got basic matchbox, um, starting with this Lincoln Continental. Cool, uh, I think new tooling for matchbox. It's this guy right here. Open her up, set her down, check her out. Take a look. Kind of cool. Uh, I mean, it looks all right. The uh, the wheel arches in the front look massive compared to the wheels, and the wheels look a bit sunken in. Uh, if I had to gripe, that's going to be my one gripe about it. It's all right, I guess, but it does look a little awkward. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below, of course, but it is a 64 Lincoln Continental, and it is a brand new casting for this year. Not sure how I feel about it. Here's a oldie but a good A. We got the Porsche 918 Spider. This casting's been around for a little bit now, right? Open that guy up. Uh, 2021 is the copyright date, so it's been around probably since 2022. And it's a nice tooling. I like this one. Uh, this color green, not my favorite. But nice little details on this uh, Porsche. And I think it looks uh, pretty nifty, this Porsche 918. So I like that. Um, this casting's been around, kind of boring, but whatever, I picked it up. Tesla Model S. I'm actually not even sure why I picked this one up. But there you go, it's in red. Not much to say about that one. Uh, Morris Minor Saloon in green. Basic, kind of nifty little, cute little car. Decent detail. Whoa, some really bad paint on that one. You don't see that too often with Matchbox, but... Ooh, whoops. Dropped her. But, uh, yeah, some really... Bleh, something's wrong with the paint there. And uh, lastly for Matchbox... Uh, new tooling, the 1977 Jaguar XJC in blue. And this is a new tooling, so yeah, copyright 2023. Kind of cool. Not a bad looking tooling. I like this one better than the uh, Lincoln, for sure. Uh, wheel choice. You know, it's sort of appropriate for the vehicle. I just don't think they look all that good. Almost like too big for some reason. Maybe not. I don't know. But not a bad uh, new tooling for Matchbox. Welcome addition to the Matchbox basic lineup. You guys will have to let me know. Uh, my favorite out of the grouping, though, is probably the Porsche, even though I hate the color. I don't like that. It It's not like a bright neon green. It's like a kind of pukey green. Uh, it's not good. It's not great. I'll just say that. Uh, all right. Neon speeders, wild graphics. I think under a black light, these things are like glow. Uh, I'm not going to get one out here, but uh, we'll take a look at them. Uh, the Toyota Celica, the price on these is a little, a little crazy, but I suppose they have tampo all over. So you get your headlights and taillight detail. And then these wild bright graphics. So there's your first one there. I don't think any of them have a metal base or anything like that. That kind of like the other semi-premium lines that have been coming up, at, coming out at Walmart. And you can almost consider this semi-premium line just because it's got like the all-over graphics. And the thing I would argue is that the graphics on these cars look better than car culture cars. So and look better than the Hot Wheels premium cars because they're actual Tampo printed graphics. They're not that. Uh, weird dot matrix wrap so this one's in complete neon yellow that's neon yellow this is puke 
That's vile. All right. Uh, this one's weird. So this is a Nissan uh, 350Z. And the weird part about it is those wheels in comparison to the wheel wells. Originally, when this casting was put out, I think it was put out with bigger wheels. I don't think they have that size wheel in that particular wheel. So I think it's stuck with what it is. And uh, therefore, looks a little bit odd because of the size of the wheel well compared to the size of the wheel. It gives it a decent, like, lowered stance. But it, uh, yeah, it does look a little bit awkward. Uh, for this car it's like a wide body kit nissan 350z uh not a terrible tooling just uh with those wheels not great uh mitsubishi eclipse in bright orange 95 eclipse and there's that guy this one looks all right bright orange uh, these neon speeders kind of remind me of the Hot Wheels uh, like revealers from back in the day that came in super bright colors. It's kind of what it's kind of reminding me of. I kind of like it. I, you know, it's not for everyone, I'm sure. This weird neon splash graphic kind of stuff going on, but yeah, I, I don't mind it. And I'm not sure I minded at 325 or 350 a car, but um. So I'm not going to collect all of them, of course, but I, I don't know. I kind of like them. I, I didn't really like them at first, and now for some reason I just kind of do. So Mazda RX-7 Drift. And I think it's now because they I just made the connection to those old Hot Wheels revealers, if you know what I'm talking about. They came in little bags that dissolved in water. And most often they came in very, very bright colors, wild graphics. And I kind of have like a thing for those because, you know... There's some castings in there that I collect, like the uh, like Ferrari 348, F40, uh, Lamborghini Countach, stuff like that, that came out in that line, and that's kind of why I'm digging them. And uh, yeah, so here's the uh, RX-7 Drift. Looking okay. So there's that one and again these things get full deco so it's kind of cool they get headlights they get tail lights and then they get this wild graphic and then the one of course that everybody's likely gonna hoard the Datsun 510 wagon will it ever not be hoarded i don't think so so the 510 wagon this was a car that was designed by junimai who is a uh, who has done the uh Kaido House stuff. And you can see they're the same size, actually. They're at the same length. It's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but basically the same scale. So they're meant to fit, I think, in scale with uh, the Hot Wheels 510. So I think that's kind of, I don't know if you necessarily meant to do that, but it, they're about the same size. So I'm missing the Acura Integra and the Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. Uh, that other, the GTR is probably going to be a tough one too uh, to find, but you know, maybe I'll get to find it at some point, but this 510 looks pretty cool. And again, you get full, uh, detail in the front there and it looks pretty decent. A little dot matrixy on this one, but these are not, these graphics are not done in the same way as the car culture stuff. And they're actually done, in my opinion, to look a lot better. I, I think so they're more sharp and I like that. All right, so that's going to be it for ep this episode. I think, honestly, the most crazy thing that we looked at is this thing right here. Uh, I was kind of not expecting to, ha not expecting for it to have any opening pieces or parts or anything like that. So that was kind of a neat little surprise. Other than that, you know, the Ultra Red is always fun to get. I always talk about that. The Mulholland Drive Singer. Um, that's a really cool model too. And then of course the Kaido house stuff is really neat. So kind of a decent little episode here. So stay tuned. Of course, I got some other stuff lined up. Uh, thank you guys again for watching another episode and enjoy your week. See you in the next one.